Hi, hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our flight into a new expression every day. So yesterday we talked about which is the long time um, policy or the societal or governmental emphasis on valuing agriculture more, like way more than commerce. So the production of goods is much, much more valued than the circulation of goods. And therefore we, we learned about the two industries, how Chinese express it. Today we have a zhong gong ye and a qing gong ye. Um, that's another two type another uh, two expressions of two different industries. And actually this ye, when it pairs with nong ye, that's the full Chinese expression to agriculture. And shang ye is more like retail, um, that's considered another industry. So ye basically is Chinese way to say what industry. And when we have a gong ye paired with it, so gong is, mostly about manufacturing, about production of things. So agriculture is production of crops uh, or food, food production, but it's different from manufacturing tools. So gong ye is more like manufacturing something that's non-food uh, related. But we have zhong and qing. That's kind of a carryover of this zhong and qing. Here is about the value if you value something, if you regard it as heavy, it's prioritize something or you super value something. And if you regard it as light, it's like you brush it away, you don't really value it that much. But over here in zhong gong ye, qing gong ye, it's different. It doesn't mean this, uh, the significance to um, the value, the priority of a society, but zhong and qing actually describes how this industry feels in terms of human or consumers. So basically it's qing gong ye is more consumer products production. So things people use, clothing, food processing, even toys, all of that that you can basically purchase on Amazon. Whatever production of such consumer goods or Walmart Target, right? <laughs> you don't want to leave out the traditional retail business, but whatever the retailers are selling you as a consumer, those are produced by the Chinese classified as qing gong ye. Then who is a zhong gong ye? Zhong gong ye is the second layer. Zhong gong ye is the production of the production site of whatever producing consumer goods. So between zhong gong ye and the qing gong ye, there is a middle layer. So the, the qing gong ye is the layer, the first layer in relation to consumer use goods. And the zhong gong ye is the second layer that build like raw material, energy, or uh, construction itself, uh, itself, or the tools, the tooling, the machinery. Imagine the apparel company, all that sewing machines, all that, uh, that's produced by a zhong gong ye. I guess so. So that's at least that's my understanding of the distinction. So when it's a heavy, it's regarded as more raw material, more heavy equipment involved, a bigger drop site. And a lot of times a zhong gong ye in China was state uh, owned government. Uh, I mean, state owned enterprises uh, is a heavy capital, heavy investment versus qing gong ye. It can be a uh, it's private, it can be a, a business that started from like trading and then have some capital and started to production of some sort of consumer goods. So, okay, let's review zhong and qing again. This heavy um, was made up of the stacking up of four characters together. So I have a human figure side view on the top and then in the middle, that kind of, <laughs> Percolated or embedded 
by two other characters. So ignore this circle, circular or oval shape with a horizontal line and ignore the bottom two lines. This bigger frame structure is our tree symbol. The tree symbol kind of look like this. Okay, this is a tree symbol. So up turn curve, downward turn curve, connected by a vertical line. That's our tree. And we have a sun symbol that's oval shape with a horizontal line that signifies the energy coming out from the sun. So energy plus the shape is kind of a spherical. Uh, then that's our sun symbol. And then at the bottom, the first layer, the first horizontal line is the ground level. Um, that's like benchmark to that. Then the pointer, like the vertical line keeps going even if it's part of the tree as well in the symbol. Um, so this vertical line going below the surface level and the ground level, that means some plant is growing, um, it's rooted below the ground, right? And then at the very end of that root, this horizontal line is an indicator. It's not a, uh, I mean, it's an abstract thing. It's a, it's a pointer, basically, it's like a finger pointing toward like there. That's what we're talking about. Um, so that's at the very end, the tip of the root. So the root is pretty abstract then because the root is supposedly is kind of spreading out with many branches, just like a tree branch, right? The root also have branches, but all that was abstracted, just of one vertical line. And then at some point and below the surface, the ground level, then the pointer is pointing to the tip of that to say, okay, yes, that's what we, what we're talking about, which is the soil from which the plant are going to plant its root on. Okay, so all that images stacking up together create the character of heaviness. I'm not sure if it's because, because it's so many objects involved with plant, with the sun, the solar over there, and then human beings activists on top of the, the soil. All that adds to the weight, like a visual weight to this. I'm not sure if that's the case, but um, this is the character that Chinese use to, to signify um, it's heavy. There are many solid material on top of that. I guess besides the sun, because the sun is not on top of it, right? It's a visual uh, illusion, if you, you may, that um, it's, the sun is embedded through the tree trunk over there over here because it's a signifier or it's an overlay of image of the sun. Well, I said it's an overlay, actually it's an underlay. So the sun is, a, is behind the tree trunk because that's the vision you see as an observer that the sun as if it appears, as if it's embedded on the tree, but actually it's far, far away from the tree. So this, this, this is the east symbol, the tree plus the sun rising just barely above the horizon. And that uh, it's, it's still in the middle of the trunks. That's the level, the height of the sun. And that's when the sun just rise up and that's the east concept. So I'm not sure human plus east on top of the soil, the three symbols, basically, uh, how that come together to mean heavy. So that's that's something mystery to be solved. Okay, and the tune is a type of vehicle. So back then, vehicle was made up with this wheel. We can understand. Okay, it's a circle, and then we have this spoke, just cross. That's enough to show spoke, and then we have an axis going or axle going through the wheel and then we have two stoppers on each hand so that the wheel and the axle doesn't separate and the wheel stay in the middle of the stopper. Um, that's my understanding of the structure of the vehicle, the main, the main structure of the vehicle because the vehicle need to be powered by either human force, somebody who have to have to cut the wheel um, or it's by animals, by horses or donkeys. So in, in any case, it's a vehicle and the right side is the sound maker, but also it's a type of vehicle that's light weighted. So this light weighted come from this, um, okay, even if this horizontal line on top of the frame, normally that means the sky, 
But in this context, because there are water, this is a water flowing sign. You can see that looks like water, right? Flowing right underneath. It cannot be the water flowing underneath the, the sky. That would make it rain, right? And we have our symbol for rain a few episodes ago. Um, but that means underground water. So this is actually ground. It's just happened to be framed on the top of the character there. And then the bottom is, I guess it's a craftsman tool that make uh, perpendicular degrees, 90 degree angle too, that's used in uh, by the craftsmen, I, I guess civil engineers back then. Uh, and so together, um, it forms this underwater, underground water, plus the tool, um, plus the cart, the, the wheel or the vehicle signifies a type of lightly weighted vehicle. We can kind of imagine, okay, so this, this part of the civil engineer, this tool part could mean sort of like engineering, right? Engineering to make it lightweight. And I'm not sure like, Okay, under underground water, what, what why why that make it lightweight? Um, maybe as if it's kind of floating on top of water. I don't know. So that's up for interpretation. But in any case, it, it was used as a sound maker. I always, I always suspect whatever sound maker was used there, the sound also carry the meaning because it's made up of some symbols. And because this sound maker um, has its meanings embedded and eventually the later generations of the language users couldn't figure out the connection of the meaning. And so they just say it's a sound maker, but it was put there for a certain reason. Um, okay, so it's it's a type of lightweight vehicle. Eventually that lightweight on vehicle got extract, extracted. The lightweight, the light, in terms of weight, <laughs> lightweight, um, was preserved as the meaning of qing. So we can still see this is the vehicle sign, um, but it could be used on anything that's light. So heavy and light paired with gong ye. Gong ye is a Chinese formal way to say it's industry uh, without saying exactly what industry, but this industry most likely to be type of manufacturing because, because as we talked, this symbol, as you can see here, is full frame elongated to take up the whole space over there as a single standing character. It's amazingly just three strokes. The other three stroke character is number three, three horizontal strokes. That's number three. We have a few other three stroke uh, characters, but nor normally Chinese characters are much more complicated. But this character with only three strokes survived over time and becomes an important and frequently used character in Chinese language because it symbols um, craftsmanship or engineering in today's term. So making stuff is the tool that used to make stuff. So this tool then can be used in, because later on as, as society gets more complicated, besides farming activity, there are a lot more specialized tool making or other stuff making, stuff making industry. So this making with hands, with like man-made stuff, whatever that is, become more and more um, popular for among the ten, uh, population, right? So probably more people are converted from farmers to this makers. So this, whatever is making, that's using the tools. So here is using the tools to symbol the whole making stuff industry. That's non-farming activity. Okay. And yeah, uh, that's a little bit complicated. <laughs> you can see the simplified Chinese only keep the top portion, almost like a hat on top of this, but underneath is a whole structure of things that didn't preserve. I guess that's enough to show um, the main features of this. So the whole character, some, according to some scholars, is, okay, you probably won't even imagine because we don't really, at least culturally, in today's Chinese music making 
or entertainment or Western. We don't really have such a elaborate frame to han the gongs. So basically it's different sizes of metal pieces that you can knock on, vibrate, and make sound in different pitches. I'm not sure in a Western orchestra if there is something as elaborate as that. But back then, music making as part of praising the God or you know asking for favors, kind of using the best sounds, at least a few human years, to try to appease or please the God for favorable conditions, mostly good weathers for um, agriculture to crop production. So that music making has a certain significance to the whole society. So music making back then was not really for entertainment, at least not for the entertainment of human beings. It's entertainment for the gods or the imagined superpower. Um, so this, as you can see, the proportion even changed, but this structure on top of the wood frame. So this kind of symbolized, kind of looking like a wood frame with this up, up turn a curve, uh, downward turn curve connected with a vertical line. That's a wood frame, wood. So something is a wood related. So that means made from wood and this horizontal line and this line I don't exactly know. Maybe that's a particular type of wood that's grown with a certain density, certain feature. I don't exactly know. But it, it looks like some sort of wooden material used in here. And I guess this could, we can view it as a structure that's kind of holding the stuff in there, right? To hold this structure on top of there. And this holder, this frame at the bottom is the whole frame to hold, lift it above ground because the gongs, the, the vibration can only happen in the middle of the air. It cannot be muted by touching any other surface, right? So it has to be airborne somehow and they have to be suspended in the middle of the air. And that suspension of this metal piece, I guess in the middle of the, the, the there is a hole so that it can be, um, threaded, uh, tie a knot onto a frame that kind of lay out each different sizes of this instrument. And this is that notch of on that horizontal beam thing that you can have the, you can kind of fix the location of that string, of that holder of that instrument so that things are evenly spaced out kind of an elaborate way of imagine the piano, right? Piano basically is metal piece. It's made into a string shape and then it's suspended in the air, nothing touches it. Until you have the, the, the key, you hit the key and then there's a complicated mechanism and then something boom onto that string to make a sound, a vibration. Wow, that's a later invention. So at the beginning to make a different pitches of sound from a metal piece, now probably from a, in a disc shape and they have to lay out in a certain way, right? So this is the frame, the device to hold that. And that device, that specialty, because it, it cannot do anything else. It just very specialized in this gong, this musical instrument, honing device, um, eventually was used as industry, paired especially with this engineering craftsman symbol. So gong yi together we use it as industry. I guess this yi came from this specialty, this specialization of its music making. It's the tool to hand the music instrument in the air. So it's a, a super, super uh, a specialized device. So this general device plus this specialized device, both of them are kind of a tools humans made to make other tools. This is to make other tools or make other things. This is to make music, right? So this pair together become our industry. And just to give you an example of what's considered 重工业, 
incomparable English translation in contemporaries living, we call it industrials. So that's like industry, industry. <laughs> in Chinese, we translate it as a zhong gong yi. So basically, there's a heavy equipment. I guess over here is a farming equipment. So farming is a production of food, food production. So to produce food, to produce, produce food. <laughs> okay. So the equipment to, to per, equipment for the production of food. Okay, let's say it this way. Then that's considered industrial. So the factory that make such tools is considered industrial. And qing gong yi, on the other hand, is directly consumer facing. They are um, production of goods that can be used directly on human beings. So a lot of times it's just apparel, accessories, um, toys, as I said, they, these um, human touchable, touchable uh, text, textile um, goodies, they are considered qing gong yi. So I translate it as consumer industry. So in America, consumer, we have consumer stables or consumer discretionary. They are just different price baskets. Like people, you have to buy them regardless of however priced versus you can optionally buy them. It's just to make you feel good. N nothing essential to your survival. So we have two subcategories between consumers, but consumer goods in Ch Chinese are uh, all classified as qing gong yi. And then there we go. We have zhong gong yi and qing gong yi. Cash interdependency of thinking about one. What are they with Sophie? See you another day.